Hi, Land Party Gamers. This is Brian Annam, giving you a review of my new Razer Edge Pro 256GB model. Now, many of you know the Razer Edge Pro is a i7 with a 640MLE video card, 2GB of dedicated video RAM, and 8GB of dedicated RAM for the device. Now, what a lot of you are thinking is, yeah, it's another Windows tablet with a badass video card, and that's true but it is a full version of Windows. When I first saw this device at CES, I decided that it's time to upgrade my current laptop, my current LAN rig, and my current tablet with one device. Now this device can do all three. Now down below I do have the docking station and as advertised the docking station is built specifically to plug your television into the tablet with HDMI and controllers. And every review shows that. There's the docking station, we've got HDMI and three USB plugs. We also have audio in, audio out, and power in. However, when I saw this, I said to myself, well wait, can't I use the docking station as a desktop docking station to turn my tablet into a full desktop computer? And so that's what we've done here. I've set this up in our LAN center. And as you can see, I'm running dual monitors. <laughs> now, I was not a big fan of Windows 8, to be honest. Even, even with the touch screen and these big buttons, I find that the Windows 7 interface was still better. But thankfully, we have a program called Classic Shell, which gives you the old start menu back. So, here, here's my desktop, and as you can see, it's actually, right now it's cloning. But we can actually set this to There we go. So now, we have two monitors set up desktop style and I will show you some video games here on the tablet. A lot of people show reviews of gaming using the handheld buttons. I was not a fan of that myself. I, I If I wanted to play consoles I would play on a controller. I would use a console. No, I'm, I'm a PC gamer. I'd rather have all the controls laid out to me right here and right here so here we are we've got world of tanks we've got it booting up I'm gonna go ahead and log in to one of our accounts and you can see the game runs beautifully we've got uh, got some examples here we'll go ahead and start a battle Now it's very smooth, even in windowed mode. We were playing Battlefield earlier, getting between 30 and 60 frames per second on low, medium, and, and even high. We are able to get a decent frame right here. With high texture settings on World of Tanks, we're getting upwards of 35 on a, this is a 1050 resolution monitor. Playing in windowed mode, we can even switch to full screen. We're getting high, uh, upwards of 50 frames per second in full screen. So here we are with Battlefield 3 launching into a online server. And again running in 
windowed mode. I'm getting 30 frames per second on an HD monitor. Pretty smooth. I have no complaints. Yeah. Oh, and I died. Let's see what our video settings are at. So we've got the textures on high, and everything else on low or medium, for a solid 30 frames per second, even during action. That's that's pretty good, that's playable. If I wanted a little higher frames per second, I'm sure I could turn the textures down. Maybe the anti-aliasing down. So there you go. <clears throat> so that shows you that you can replace a desktop computer with a docking station and a monitor that supports HDMI input with the Razer Edge Pro. You're also thinking about replacing your gaming laptop with this, as I was. They have, or are going to have, a keyboard mount, which will add twice the amount of battery life and give you a flip-up style, laptop style keyboard for this. However, it is quite clunky doesn't offer any more hard drive space and is going to cost around two hundred dollars <laughs> I thought maybe we could improve upon this design so here is a case from Case Logic that I bought at Sears and if I open it up I've altered it to include a Bluetooth keyboard it's velcroed in so I can replace the batteries easily. A travel strap that is not needed when the gaming device is in this holder. These here go right into the top ports on the device. And if we take a look at the back side, we have a four port USB 3 non-powered hub a USB 3 one terabyte external hard drive that plugs in below right into the bottom side of this we have a place for our mouse our mouse pad and all LAN parties a gigabit USB 3 adapter now they sell USB 2 gigabit adapters but the throughput on a USB 2 device will not allow you to reach gigabit speeds. USB 3 is going to be your closest alternative because the tablet itself does not have a LAN jack. Neither does the docking station, which actually surprised me considering this is meant for gaming and transferring games over 802.11n or a U standard USB 2 uh, adapter will not suffice so I found a USB 3 one on Amazon uh, and all that plugs in down through here and you can't see it because of the cable routing the headphone jack comes out on the front here so I can plug my headphone right into that during lands and this is great because when I'm at school or at work I can just plop the case open the screen sits right here And there we are. And you have full touch controls with this as, is, as you would any other tablet. 
The tablet plays games even faster with higher frames per second on the device's screen itself because it's a lower resolution. However, I still prefer the high-def monitor, of course. The things to note that I've noted with this device, owning it for a while, a couple things I'd like to go over if you're a prospective buyer. The docking stations must, especially if you want to use it as a desktop conversion as I have. Keep in mind, however, that the ports in the back are USB 2, not USB 3. It also doesn't come with its own power supply. So when I take it from here to here, I have to make sure and wrap the power supply up and I actually have a port, a, a slit at the bottom where it goes and the tablet sits right into it. And then it comes out the back in this hole right here. You plug it in. So they will be selling extra power supplies for around $50, $40-$50. Not available retail yet. Keep an eye out. All in all, it's a great purchase if you have the money. I purchased mine on Amazon for just shy of $1,700, but with 0% Amazon financing, it's only going to come out to around $170 a month. Not too bad for how great a device this is. Average play times are around an hour, hour and a half without a battery being plugged in. And four or more hours of simple work, such as emailing and non-gaming utilities things that don't use the internal GPU that use the onboard NVIDIA processor for your video. <clears throat> the Intel processor uses less power. That is the Razer Edge. Tell your friends.